So I had this thing out in the dark for the first time and realized that the high beams point basically at the tops of the trees and the low beams kind of skim the roofs of all the other cars out on the road. So I'm gonna need to do some adjusting. I don't know why they didn't do this at the dealership. I guess I'm sort of new to buying vehicles new, but I thought they kind of got stuff like this fixed for you before you actually drove it on the road, but apparently not. And the easiest way that I've found to do this is with a little stubby short Phillips head screwdriver. The adjustment bolt is going to be right down there. So what I'll end up doing is sticking this down in there. I'm going to back up from the wall here to kind of get a little bit of an idea of where I'm aimed at. Now, we'll get that down in there. And if I turn this clockwise like that, Notice my beam is going down slowly. So I'm going to give that quite a few cranks. Again, going clockwise is going to be lowering the light. Counterclockwise would be bringing it up higher. Now with just that one adjustment point, I did actually move the high beams along with the low beams. So those don't need any separate adjustment. They just stay right along with the lows. Now, I actually could have done this adjustment by reaching up underneath from the opposite side of the bike. However, the thing is, trying to adjust this in the garage isn't really gonna give you a great idea of where that light needs to be. So by doing it on the bike, kind of getting that down, it's gonna be a little bit easier to adjust that when you go out and test it out on the road. And I would recommend that that's the best way to do it. Obviously, you wanna do it on a nice quiet road, maybe even do it off the road on a trail if you can. Make sure you're somewhere safe before you're fiddling around on the front of your bike but this is something that really kind of just needs to be gone out and tested and adjusted in the field. You can look up some sort of goofy schematics that you can put on the wall, but I found that that really just takes more time than it does to go out and test it out on the road, and that's usually when you know whether it's gonna be right or not. If you guys aren't familiar with doing that, basically you wanna get your low beam just to the point where it's gonna be below oncoming traffic's eyes. You obviously don't wanna be shining in their eyes, but the higher the better, because then you can see a little bit further. Good way to double check that, especially on a bike like this, where the high and the low are kind of connected, is flipping on that high beam and seeing where that beam pattern is. And the high beam will basically just come on just above that low beam and should shoot as far down the road as you can possibly see. Obviously, if it's too high, that's not gonna be good because you're losing that usable light up into the trees. If it's too low, then you're just gonna be shining again, kind of low like a low beam would and not getting that optimal down road uh, vision. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, make sure you let me know down in the comment box below, give me a like. If you guys wanna see the KLR 650 and me out on the trail in beautiful Wisconsin woods, then click the subscribe button, click the bell after you subscribe so let us you know anytime I put a video out. Thanks for watching guys, take care, stay safe, stay swanky. Make sure you can get out and enjoy this beautiful world. But if you can't, check out some videos over here. Sure, it's a cooler machine, isn't it?